Once again, we are here at lawhub.lsac.org, ready to go into logical reasoning drill set one. So we'll go straight in with a new drill set. We'll let the hammer hammer away for a second, and we are going to go straight to question number seven, which is going to be asking about a specific type of question that you might recognize as a paradox task. So as always, we will select our highlighting tool and we'll read the question stem for number seven, which asks which one of the following, if true, most helps to resolve the apparent discrepancy described above. So you can treat these paradox questions in a few ways, but I generally recommend doing so as if the paragraph still had an argument and a conclusion. So we're just going to go highlight as the conclusion in the paragraph on the left hand side, whatever is the discrepancy that's being described. So we read the sentence on the left in a study of several hundred scientists. Researchers found that on average, the more pieces of mediocre and flawed work a scientist in the study had produced, the more prominent and successful that scientist was. So we're going to just go ahead and highlight this kind of concluding statement of, oddly enough, among these several hundred scientists, the more pieces of mediocre and flawed work they had, the more prominent and successful they were. And you do still want to think with in real life scenarios, what might be the cause of that? And hopefully there's a relatively kind of intuitive reaction of, well, yeah, you have to try a lot to become a prominent and successful scientist. So maybe on the path to succeeding, you had to produce some mediocre and flawed work and then overcome that mediocre and flawed work to become prominent and successful. So with that kind of prediction in our mind, we're going to go to the answer choices. And as always, keep that highlighting tool selected so we can identify reasons to eliminate as we go through until we find a choice that we want to select that matches that prediction of, well, you probably have to have mediocre and flawed work to become a prominent and successful scientist. So starting with choice A, most scientists produce a great deal of mediocre and flawed work in addition to any work they produce that contributes to their prominent and success. Well, we're talking about prominent and successful scientists specifically, so just categorizing it to most scientists overall doesn't explain that relationship that was described in the paragraph or the sentence, really. So we'll eliminate choice A. Next, choice B, the several hundred scientists in the study were not fully representative of scientists in general. Well, this is one of those instances where I may not even read further because I know that the discrepancy, the paradoxical information is limited to this study. It's not being applied to scientists in general, so we can eliminate choice B pretty briskly. Then choice C, on average, the more pieces of important high quality work a scientist has produced, the more prominent and successful that scientist is. Well, this sounds like a you know viable statement, but our paradox, our discrepancy that we're supposed to resolve, doesn't even mention important high quality work. So we can eliminate choice E for that reason because it doesn't explain the discrepancy even though it makes sense. Then choice D, the amount of mediocre and flawed work a scientist produces and the amount of work contributing to his or her prominence and success both tend to increase with the total amount of work he or she produces. Now this is definitely LSAT legal kind of just word salad, but it's actually the exact prediction we mentally came up with at the beginning of this problem. It's saying that if you're going to become a prominent and successful scientist, you're going to have to produce mediocre and flawed work on that path to prominence and success. So we will select D. As always, check E just to make sure, but for a scientist to be prominent and successful, an unusually large proportion of that scientist's work must be superior to the quality of most scientists' work. Well, we're not comparing one scientist to another. We're just saying that if you are a prominent scientist, you seem to have a lot of mediocre and flawed work. So choice E certainly does not help to resolve the discrepancy either. So remember, for these type of paradox or resolve a discrepancy type questions, you can treat it just like a mini argument with a conclusion that you're basically trying to explain. And when you are working through it, try to predict what that explanation might be like we did with this problem. And in the next video, we'll be moving on to question eight and a different type of logical reasoning task.